1880. The deadly sound of a six-shooter in the hand of the desperado had become almost commonplace in the West. Men were shot down, robberies committed, and bands of marauders and renegades roamed the small frontier towns, looting, burning, and plundering. And when the bandits were captured, they were often turned loose because witnesses feared to come forward. This made the lawman's job, the job of keeping law and order in the community, almost impossible. Territory, October 20, 1880, early morning. Anybody see anything? This one's still alive, Clay. Uh, Barney Dager. And brother Chalky. This is really going to be rough on their sister. Give me a hand. Actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Hollister, sheriff of Tombstone, had gone in pursuit of the gang that had robbed the saloon, killed the owner, and left two of their own members behind, one dead and one dying. The gang had vanished, and the witnesses to the crime refused to come forward to identify the killers. Later the same day, mid-morning, October 20. <laughs> Whoa! I'm Sherry Dager. My brothers, where are they? Chalky's dead. Barney's in a cell in the back. Doc Cunningham's with him right now. Wait here. 
I'll see if it's all right. Is he well enough to see his sister? Miss Dagger? How is he, Doc? Bad. He's ready to be a undertaker's guest now. Will you do me a favor? Anything you say, Clay. Keep Chalky's condition under your hat. Be careful it doesn't explode in your face. I don't know what you get planned. But don't count on Barney. He won't be around that long. I'm sorry I had to hear that, Miss Digger. Real sorry. I'm sorry, too. If there's anything I can do to make it easier for you. You can let me take him home where he belongs. I don't want him to die in jail. Barney's a member of a gang who robbed and killed the saloon keeper this morning. And he's paying for it with his life. First Chalky and now Barney. Let me take him home, please. I'm sorry, Miss Dager. I can't do that. Why? What difference does it make if he dies here or at home? Might make a lot of difference. To who? You? Yes, to me. And to you, and maybe the whole rest of the town. I don't care about the rest of the town. I only care about Barney. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. Nobody around here cares about anybody else. And people get shot down in the street every day because of that. Well, maybe Barney can help me put an end to it. Barney? He owes something to the territory. Let him pay his debt. He's dying. You talk like this? When a man helps to commit murder and robbery, it makes him a criminal. It's my business to understand that. It's your business, too. Barney's not a criminal. He's young. So is Chalky. They made their mistakes, but they didn't mean anything. They would have straightened out. Yeah? Well, tell that to the saloon keeper. He was a gambler. He was as bad as the others. A man who took advantage of drunks and fools. But he was a man with as much right to live as anybody else. Barney and Chalky helped to take that right away from him. Look, Miss Dager. You can't excuse some people and not others. If you do, the law becomes meaningless. If it treats everybody the same, it is meaningless. And if you think that way, too, you're meaningless. You're just an empty shell of a man standing on a mountaintop. Oh, I hope it gets lonely there. You ever stand all alone on a mountaintop, Quint? Sometimes that's the only place where a man can think. Yeah, I've been there. I think I'll go over to the epitaph and see Harris. Keep an eye on things, will you? Keep everybody away from him, including his sister. She isn't everybody. <laughs> issue of the epitaph I ever got out. Mm. Thanks to you, I don't get to sell a single copy. Just so long as the story sells. A 
and I think our buyer just got here. Who is he? I think he's a member of the gang. If he is, he'll be a direct line to the others. Proof. Besides, after that article, I think they'll be looking for me and Barney. And I'd rather have them here than me there. Yeah. Judging from the looks of him, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. I think you sold your story. Fancy knife throwing. Maybe you need a little more practice. I hear what I am, Paul. Yeah? Barney's recovering. He's going to identify us. It's all over the front page of the paper. Never leave a wounded man behind to testify, he says. Too bad you didn't use a knife on Barney, too. Go ahead. No, no. When the odds change, I stop playing. Now, let's talk about Barney Dago and his sister Sherry. Killing a woman is where I draw the line. Killing? Who said anything about killing? There are some people who are far more useful alive. Mistake is one of them. And this editor fellow uh, might very well be another. I'm quite sure he's a pillar of tombstone society. You touch the editor and you're a dead man. Hollis will come after you. Exactly, but he'll have Barney with him. Now, if the editor means so much to Hollister and to the town, I'm quite sure they'd be very glad to exchange Barney for him. Yeah, well, uh... How are we going to get the editor to come here? We'll persuade him one way or the other. And then we have to pay our visit to Miss Dager. She has to persuade Hollister to exchange Barney for the editor, or we kill the editor. Of course, unfortunately for him, he'll be dead as soon as it's all over. But then, so will Barney. Then there'll be nobody left who will dare offer to testify against Dirk Padella again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah? Now listen carefully. There's a gun trained on you across the street. Take your time. Turn around slow. And look up toward the roof of that building. There's two more besides that one on the street. Mine and another one near Dunbar Staple. Well, what do you want? He'll be covered all the way. Go to Dunbar's, pick up your horse. And ride out of town, past Fremont and first, and wait. And don't look for help from your friend Hollister. We waited for him to make his afternoon rounds. He's on the other side of town. to my ranch to tell me that? I thought it was easy in having you visit me where you might be followed. And if I don't persuade Clay Hollister to make the exchange? Then Barney will probably die. 
Oh, no, I won't kill him. I like Barney. He's a good man. But if he stays in jail, state's witness or not, he'll undoubtedly swing for the murder of the saloon keeper. I don't believe you. That's your privilege. There's one other thing. If the exchange isn't effective within 24 hours, your esteemed editor is going to be dead. Let's see what he has to say about that. Don't do it. He's lying. They'll kill me anyway. Now, I presume that you'll talk to Hollister? October 20, 1885. A long day. And a day Sheriff Clay Hollister and the citizens of Tombstone would never forget. Anywhere in town, Clay. I've looked everywhere. If you were going somewhere, he would have told somebody. Left somebody in charge of the office. He usually does. Where are you going? Over to Dunbar's. If he was going to leave town, he had to go by horse or buggy. Maybe they know something about it. I've got to talk to you. I'd go ahead, talk. Not here. Oh, please, Sheriff. It's, a, it's about Barney and the editor. All right. You said you wanted to talk about Barney and the editor? They're holding the editor hostage. Who? Who's holding him? The men in the gang that Barney and Chalky belong to. Where are they now? I don't know. They, they came to my ranch. They had Mr. Clyborne with them. They said that if you didn't exchange him with Barney, and they'd kill the editor. What is it all they said? No. They said that if Barney stayed in jail, he'd hang for the murder of the saloon keeper. Is, is that why you've come here? I saw what they did to the editor. They beat him, but he's still alive, and I think he will be until they're through with him. I, uh, I remembered what you said this morning about nobody caring about anyone else. And I, uh, I suddenly realized you were right. I was wrong. Barney and Chalky were wrong. And now an innocent man is suffering because of it. And that's why you came here? Yes. All right. You tell him I'll make the exchange, but on my terms, I'll have Barney at Chalky's funeral at Boot Hill Cemetery tomorrow. Tell him to have the editor there. That's where I'll make the exchange. Now, I think you better see Barney. Boot Hill, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I will be there with the editor. You know, he almost came back last night to see you, but decided against it. My friends are afraid of ghosts in the dark. We decided it'd be better in the daylight, where we can see as well as being seen. And for once, I'm very glad I agreed with them. You look much better dressed like that, softer and sleepy. I like it. Thank you. I shall be seeing you again. I'll be looking forward to it. This morning, Boot Hill. That's right. I'll be there. We'll all be there. Poor Chalky's funeral. Good day, ma'am. Hardly seems right somehow. Going to a funeral to pay your respects to the dead, wearing guns. 
Well, those guns keep a lot of people from paying their respects to you. I guess that's about it. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Barney ain't with him. Where'd you expect him to be? Dancing a jig in the streets? It's his brother's funeral. Barney's where he should be, in the buggy with his sister. Untie his hands. Take the gag out. We wouldn't want Hollister to think we've been mistreating his friends, would we? Barney? He's here, just like I promised you. In the buggy? No, in the hearse. Barney's dead. Harris! <laughs> Havana tobacco rolled especially for me. to me yesterday about Barney. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you told me then that Barney was dead. It helped make today a lot easier. Thank you. No, thank you. In a town just full of people depending on other people, you were the only one who offered to help. That might make it easier for now. I'm going to be thinking about you. That uh, might make me feel a little bit less like that man standing alone on his mountaintop. Well, you sure got your faith in human nature restored fast. Stick around. A couple of years you may be old enough to understand. Whistle me back where 
tune that'll carry me to Tombstone Territory. If your past has run afoul of the law, it's a handy place to be. Cause your future's just as good as your draw in Tombstone Territory. Whistle me up, a man only. 